Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 14th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Today we had a bit of sunshine in the morning and then it clouded over in the afternoon and we had south winds all day and it got up to near 50 degrees and we had the first big day of the season. Here we have a northern flicker, which is a kind of woodpecker, and we know this is a male because it has a mustache. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk. Remember on red-tailed hawks, look for these dark patagial bars and look for the belly band. And we know it's an adult because it has a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. And we notice that it's missing a few tail feathers. Here we have an immature bald eagle, and this individual is coming up on two years old. And it's a good example of when I talk about retained juvenile feathers. So these longer feathers here, see these three and these two, these are juvenile feathers. These are feathers that the bird grew while it was still in the nest before it fledged. All these other feathers that are shorter have been replaced already one time. This is just part of the natural molt cycle for bald eagles. They don't replace all of their feathers every year. But over the next year or two, these feathers will also be replaced. The northern shrike is still around and looking as handsome as ever. Here we have a northern harrier streaming overhead. And we see that this is one of the brown types, so we know it's not an adult male. It's either an adult female or a juvenile of either sex. And we can tell that this is an adult female because of the streaking on the upper breast and also this area is a little more heavily marked than we see on the juveniles. We had the biggest day so far for turkey vultures today with 77, and this bird gives us kind of a side profile, shows a lot of the field marks. We see the red head. Remember, they don't have feathers on their head, so you're seeing the red skin. And we see the contrasting undersides, where the body and the underwing coverts are dark, and then the actual flight feathers of the wing and tail are white. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. This bird was born last spring or summer and still has its first set of feathers. We can see it has a dark head and a dark underside, although it has started to fade quite a bit just because these feathers are almost a year old. And we can see that none of the feathers in the wings have been replaced. They're all the same length. Another good field mark to look for on juvenile bald eagles are these pale inner primaries. So sometimes when the bird is backlit, these can shine quite brightly as the sun shines through them. Here we have another turkey vulture, and this one we're looking more straight up at it, and we can really get a sense of that two-toned underside. And actually, the closest confusion species for a turkey vulture is an adult golden eagle. They can look quite similar, but notice how small the head is on a turkey vulture. So on the golden eagle, we would expect to see a bigger head, although not quite as big as on a bald eagle. But the underside plumage on a golden eagle can look surprisingly similar to that of a turkey vulture, so it's good to always double check what you think are just turkey vultures. Let's work through the identification of this bird. This is in the Accipiter genus, and we know that just because of the overall shape with the long tail. So that means we either have a sharp-shinned hawk, a cooper's hawk, or a northern goshawk. And we can rule out northern goshawk. Goshawk would have broader wings, and the streaking on the underside would normally extend not just on the upper breast, but down onto the lower breast and down onto the undertail coverts as well. So we know it's not a goshawk. So is it a sharp shinned hawk or a Cooper's hawk? Let's look at a couple things. First of all, the head looks fairly large. So this bird is pushing its wrists forward, which is typical of both species in a glide. But even so, the head is sticking out quite a bit in front of the leading edge of the wing. So if we draw a line there, we see the head sticks out quite a bit. So this has a big head, so that would be one field mark in favor of Cooper's hawk. Let's look at the tail. Does this tail look rounded or does it look squared off? I would say this tail looks squared off. And... Normally, when we talk about tails on occipiters, 
When we say the tail is squared off, we would say that's a sharp shinned hawk. However, that field mark only applies if the tail is at least slightly opened. Here, this tail is completely folded, which means that even Cooper's hawks do not show that round tail tip because those shorter outer tail feathers are lined up directly with the longer feathers, so you don't get a chance to see the shorter feathers. So a Cooper's hawk in a glide with a completely folded tail, the tail tip can also look squared off. Now let's look at the streaking on the underside of this bird. And if we imagine if this bird was perched upright in front of us, this streaking looks like it would be brown teardrop streaking. And that is a field mark for a Cooper's hawk. On a sharp shinned hawk, the streaking usually goes down a bit farther and usually it's not teardrop shaped streaking. It's a little more messy looking. It's a little thicker looking. So this kind of uh, patterning on the upper breast is usually a sign of a Cooper's hawk. Again, some sharp shinned hawks show it, but when we take all of the field marks into account, the big head, um, the shape of the tail, remember, doesn't really tell us either way, but the streaking and my impression of the overall size of the bird, we can confidently say that this is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have a soaring common raven, and I think this is a good example of what I've talked about where the tail is diamond shaped. So we can really see this diamond shape. And that's mostly because these outer tail feathers are so much shorter. Again, if we were to close the tail, these outer tail feathers are much, much, much shorter than these central tail feathers. So it gives it that diamond shape or sometimes called wedge shaped tail. Okay, what do we see on this hawk? The first thing that catches my eye is this tail pattern. Looks like a dark tail with thin white lines, like lines on a chalkboard. We also see kind of a black and white checkerboard patterning on the wings as well. And I see pale crescents near the wingtips. And we can even see the color in the photo, although in the field that might be more difficult depending on the lighting conditions, but it's got this orange color underneath. All of these field marks combined make this an adult red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another adult red-tailed hawk. Again, patagial bars, belly band. We know it's an adult because it has a dark trailing edge and a red tail. Let's compare that to this bird. We still have dark patagial bars and a belly band, but this time we have no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. So this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk meaning this one was born last spring or summer. We had a visitor at the Hawk Watch today who was hoping to see an eastern meadowlark because it was going to be a lifer. And in fact, he was the one to spot this meadowlark perched in a tree. So congrats on the lifer, Bob. Here we have another adult red-shouldered hawk. This one is in a glide posture. And the one thing that I always use to tell the difference between red shoulders and red tails is by shape. And red-shouldered hawks are just a little bit thinner looking than red tails. Red tails look big and bulky. Red-shouldered hawks, their tail looks a little longer. Their wings look a little skinnier. So I always think of red-shouldered hawks as almost being halfway between a Cooper's hawk and a red-tailed hawk. Here we have another juvenile red-tailed hawk. Again, patagial bars, belly band. It's a juvenile, so no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. And I just mentioned that red shoulders show long tails, but I should also say that juvenile red-tailed hawks also look like they have long tails, especially when they're folded closed like this. But just the overall shape of this bird, the wings look kind of broad, just looks bulky when it's gliding overhead. Here we have an American kestrel, one of our small falcons. And the one good field mark on kestrels is the facial pattern. They kind of have these double cheek lines. And uh, we know that it's a falcon because it has pointed wings. And our other small falcon is the merlin, which has much different underside markings. They're much darker underneath, kind of a thick streaking, whereas kestrels look light underneath. Sometimes when we're trying to identify a hawk, we can use a nearby hawk that we know the identity of to get a size reference. So in this example, the larger bird is obviously an adult bald eagle. You see the white head and tail. And so we can look at this other bird, 
And we see that it's a falcon because of the pointed wingtips. But we're trying to tell what is the size. Is it a small falcon like a kestrel or a merlin? Or is it a big falcon like a peregrine falcon? And compared to the bald eagle, it still looks small, but it's not anywhere near as small as an American kestrel or a merlin would look compared to a bald eagle. So we can get the direct size comparison and feel confident in identifying this falcon as a peregrine falcon. And any day that you see sandhill cranes is a good day. And these are pretty distinctive just because they're gray underneath. You have the feet trailing behind. You have the long neck. Um, the one comparison species that you have to be careful with is great blue herons. Now, normally when great blue herons fly, their necks are curved rather than straight like we see on the sandhill cranes. But occasionally great blue herons will stretch their neck out. So be careful. If we look at the eBird checklist, we see that today we had 52 species. And if we look at the hawk count report, we see that our totals for today were 77 turkey vultures, 17 bald eagles, 2 northern harriers, 6 cooper's hawks, 26 red-shouldered hawks, 29 red-tailed hawks, 3 American kestrels, and 1 peregrine falcon for a grand total of 161. So by far the biggest day so far this season. And I know compared to other days we'll have this season, this is not very many. But this was the first day that it really felt like we were having a good day of hawk watching. Especially with such high numbers of red tails and red shoulders. So the season is finally starting to pick up and it was a lot of fun today and there's a lot more fun to come. If we look at the non-raptor highlights, we see we had no new species for the season, but we did have some cool birds. We had a lot of Canada geese hanging out on the bay. We had the snow goose cross Canada goose hybrid again. I think this is the third day I've seen that. Two sandhill cranes, two killdeer, northern shrike, raven, meadowlark. So a lot of the less common birds that we see, or at least species we don't see every day. So it was a good day overall for not just raptors, but non-raptors as well. And if we take a look at the forecast, tomorrow looks rainy, so probably not a good day. Wednesday and Thursday are going to be warmer with light southerly winds, so those could be good days. My only concern is if a lake breeze kicks in in the afternoon, that could shut the flight down. So the mornings might be better on those days. All right, that's it for today. And like I said, today was a lot of fun and it's just going to keep getting better. So I hope to see a lot of you out at the platform soon. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.